Does passing these fitness tests means I have to be treated like crap? Morning, everybody, or evening, I guess. If you're seeing this one when it first comes out, it's about midnight. It's kind of a big deal. I know it's bad for the algorithm, but what the hey. So I'm going to need you to help me out. Like, subscribe, you know the deal. Uh, and just watch and enjoy yourself. This is going to be a field report. If you guys haven't been aware of what a field report is, it's kind of a guy tries something in his marriage to fix a certain problem. And then he writes down what he did. He observes, he orients his decisions to a better decision, he makes a decision, and then he acts on it and then reflects on it. This is the reflection. And then you pass this amongst other guys because most guys running into fairly similar situations. And so guys who haven't done it can learn from this guy and those who have done it swap notes with him. And between the group of them, they eventually come up with better ways to live happier lives, have happier families, or, you know, send the 304 to the streets. But it really, it, I mean, yeah. Anyways, this field report is an old seven years ago one from a guy named Spexer. Passing shit tests means being treated like shit. And a shit test is essentially if a girl has feelings of attraction, it's mostly subliminal or like a, a limbic. So what they do is they tend to have bratty external behavior to test it to see if it's like a real signal of desire or just, you know, she happens to be mistaken. And generally speaking, as the guy, if you let the girls test phase you, it kind of reduces attraction. It's one of those things in the marriage, especially when guys start thinking about blank slate equalism and like men and women are interchangeable and equal. They think about women like they think about men and it doesn't work that way. And so this is one of those ways where, you know, everybody's like, well, why shouldn't people be this? Like, yeah, no, it, this is why, this is why, this is why it doesn't work. So he starts with, uh, does this mean I have to be treated like crap? You know, this is the question I've been asking myself after nine months being red pilled. I've learned to recognize the little digs and challenges as an opportunity to prove myself worthy, but hell I'm growing tired and they're making me not want to be with her. So I said something twice now over the last week, and maybe this means I failed these tests. I would love some feedback. Uh, first off was a shit test. She threw my way when he had a few other couples over and she did it in front of them. One of the women challenged what I was saying as BS, and then I agreed and amplified her and played up how I should never be doubted. My wife snickered some dig about never doubting that I'll always think that I'm great or something like that. And, you know, sorry to ramble, but the point is it was a non-sexual dig at my expense. I played it off and showed them my website on my phone, proving that I was right and boasted even more. Hey, I'm going to pause here. Do you guys kind of see where this one's already going? Like this guy thinks like, I got it, man. I'm alpha. I've got this stuff. And then he's having an argument with a girl. And then one of them pokes fun at him. And so he starts pulling up websites like, like a Redditor would. And then he's wondering like, I don't get why everybody treats me like crap. Like, don't they know I'm right? But I mean, whatever, here to there. So I told her the next day I was bothered by how I handled her attitude at the party. And I told her I'm not going to tolerate being made fun of or put down in front of others. But when she said it, I didn't want to insult her back or put her in her place, you know, out of respect. I didn't want to make her lose face. She started to argue semantics and led into a larger conversation about how I expect the women in my life to build me up, not tear me down, especially in front of others. And in the past, she's done this a bunch. So it's kind of like a reoccurring theme in the marriage. So she said that you talk yourself up so much that somebody needs to bring you down to earth. And maybe I've been doing a much agree and amplify. You know, if I recall, I got up and got busy with the project, being distant for most of the day. She made some exaggerated compliments at first in front of the kids, making a joke out of it. You know, heck, I think she's red pilling me more than I'm red pilling her, which again, this guy's like, it's, there's so much to talk about on this one. And the next incident was Sunday, just got home after a two day men's retreat and came in very upbeat and affectionate. She shrugged off the kisses and when it was pretty negative. And then when she and him were catching up, her responses totally popped the balloon of positivity and I called her on it. I can't remember the exact details, but it was something like, I did something great. She's like, yeah, not likely type stuff. And so I told her, you wanted examples from our last talk? Here you go. Comments like that from you do nothing for me, but make me want to be elsewhere. And her response was something along the lines of, I can't believe you're being so sensitive. Jeez.
which makes me think <laughs> that I failed the shit test. I couldn't handle her testing me. But on the other side of the coin, I'm thinking this was a good choice because I'm letting her know what behavior I'll tolerate and what behavior I won't. What do you guys think? I'm going to get into like uh, what we talked about then, but a couple a couple personal thoughts first. And then we'll get into like the Jack side of things. There is some very obvious takeaways for you guys. One, when you're having a fight, there is this technique that uh, you'll learn in the red pill very early on. I want to say it's Manuel Smith's, but I could be mistaken. And I just refer to it as having like the memory of a goldfish. He calls them res uh, quick resets. The idea is... If you're having a fight about some emotional thing and emotions are going high and whatever, the next day, if your wife's like, hey, I want to talk about that fight last night, or you feel the need to go bring it up last night to make sure you were heard, shut up. Shut up. Look, most of our fights are emotional nonsense. And the only purpose to relive that same emotional nonsense is because you want to start another fight. The fight's over. The guy talked about his feelings. She laughed at that. He told her that was offensive. She told him to calm down. They went to bed. He got up and he started it again. Like, and what are you expecting at this point? My wife thinks I'm too sensitive. I've brought this up seven times over the last six days. <laughs> it's like, she's not wrong. At this point, it's almost like, I, I can feel it through the screen because I know what I'm doing, but I can feel her like begging him begging him to stop being a bitch <laughs> just come on man i need you to do this secondly he's playing the cocky funny route talking about how great he is how awesome he is i'm sure you guys have seen like another uh red pilled content creator on here mld john modern life dating he does that all the time i'm awesome don't worry about it i got money i'm famous i'm whatever and the thing about that is if you're going to play the cocky funny asshole at the dinner party Girls are going to poke fun at you because A, they love the kayfabe. This is like wrestling. They're watching a Ric Flair promo. And what do you do when you watch Ric Flair talking about styling and profiling? You call him an asshole. And then he just laughs it off and continues doubling down. That's the game. You know when Rolo talks about they just want a guy to get it? Yeah, you acting cocky in a social setting, being fun, the girls chipping away at you and you laughing that off is how the game is played. It's not confidence if a snide remark can pull you out of it. Hence, shit test. They're shitting all over your happiness to see if it's really happiness or not. And if it is, they tend to get attracted to that stuff. So, uh... And then, what was the other part I wanted to bring up here? Where'd it go? Oh yeah, the two-day men's retreat. The fuck is that? I was looking at that, and I was like, I wondered at the time. I wanted to push on it, but I'm like, ah, it's not really the important detail, but... So you go somewhere where some guru tells you, dude, you're like testicular cancer meetings for fucking Fight Club, right? You can cry now, Cornelius. Like, you're a man. You're a strong man. Here's some peyote. Here's a campfire. Uh, let's shoot paintball guns in the desert or whatever they're doing. And then you go home and you feel like a million bucks. You're like, yes, I am awesome. I've transformed. I'm charming. I'm good looking and in shape, but bored. I need something to do next. Another challenge to conquer. Please give it to me. And then the girl's like, no, you're not. And he's like, shut up. I am awesome. Like, it's so easy to crumple this stuff. Now, I don't know how much his men's retreat cost him, but every single one of those dollars was just a waste of time. It's like, and I'm going to steal a line from one of my favorite bloggers, the last psychiatrist, where he talks about Guinness being like a beta male drink, which long story short, he has this quote where he's like, uh, the best of men, except for real men. For those men, there's Guinness. And he's like, so what... What kind of men is this made to appeal for? And he goes, it's beta males. It's the kind of guy that wants to do something to show he's a man. Except for without doing anything. He just wants to feel it. And it just kind of made me laugh when I looked at this one. And that's the impression I got from this. This guy has a serious insecurity issue. And because of that, every time he tries to pretend like he's alpha, it crumbles so quickly. And every time that happens, he loses a little bit of respect or a little bit of adulation from his family which sucks because that's probably inferior interfering with his sex life anyway so jack ten of hearts you know prolific uh 
red pill meteorologist, has this quote. He starts it off like, Hamsteries, you are weak and ineffectual, wearing the dressings of a stronger man, and I need to make you think, or make, I need you to make sure that you know that you think that. Also, you failed the test. And he's like, this is 99% of this guy's problem. His wife's opinion of his sexual market value or his value is not aligned with his. He thinks he's greater than he is. She does not, hence the friction. In this case, it stems from empty intellect. Now, the op, the original poster, considers himself smart and knowledgeable about many things. But if op doesn't apply his intellect in the household, you know, Clover is growing instead of grass because of low nitrogen in the soil or like some fancy stuff to do with like whatever logistics are in the house, right? Then his wife will just see him as a glorified trivia expert. Now, this is to Specs. Like, Specs, your wife will respect you more when she admires you. Like, do you think you deserve admiration? If not, start working on becoming more admirable as a person. It actually goes back to a mids watch like in the 50s where it's um, your goal in the red pill, especially if you're in a relationship or married, isn't to fuck your wife. Your goal is to be more fuckable. Puts the onus at the locus of control on you, puts the success on you, and doesn't put you in any double binds. And this is kind of like just expanding upon that. So consider showing your wife how many people, women, do admire you, and perhaps an attitude adjustment is an order if she cares to stay ma married to you. Now, if you want to, like, practical that up, there's a whole bunch of places you can take that. Easy one, in those social situations where he's talking about how awesome he is and friend's wife is poking fun, just flirt back. That's how the game is played. Do you think, you think he's the first guy who's ever talked about how awesome he was around a group of women? I guarantee you, they've got more experience in hearing dudes talk about how awesome they are than you can imagine. It's almost up there with, like, it's like the second type of notch count, the brag count. So yeah, they're going to poke fun and they're going to find the guys who have confidence double down on it because they are confident. They're also going to find the guys that aren't confident and are faking it start trying to defend themselves. There's a concept called deer that you really need to learn. Defend, excuse, explain, and rationalize. And Op did that. Specs are here. He started rationalizing, you know, pulling up the... See, I got a source. And that right there, once you're doing that, you become a validation seeking person in that arrangement. In other words, you put the other person as the judge of your value and your behavior. And if there's one thing that dries up panties more than anything, if there's a one thing that makes wives decide not tonight, I have a headache again. It's the idea of putting them in charge. Like Rich Cooper says it. He's like, if you, if you treat her like a celebrity, she treats you like a fan. And that's kind of what we're getting at here. So the takeaway from you guys, pretty simple. If you're going to be Ric Flair, Go all Ric Flair. If you're going to talk about how awesome you are and they poke at you, just roll with the joke, man. This is why I always tell guys, join an improv class. If you don't know how to roll with things, then improv is going to be a great way to learn it because you can't just say no and reset the scene. You have to go with what you're given. And then a lot of this wouldn't even matter. Like you can fake it, sure, like the way I've been talking about, but you really want to make it. And that's the point. It's not to be able to have some tips and tricks to hide your insecurities, it's not to have insecurities at all. It's at the point where you're no, you don't need a two day men's retreat to feel like a man. It's I'm going fishing with two buddies because that's what I'm gonna do. And that's kind of, that's what men do. They kind of just plop themselves down somewhere and dare somebody to move them. I, I have, they have the freedom to go and do what they want because they know it's like sustainable. Like they don't go fishing when the rent is due, but they go fishing after the rent's been paid. Anyway, take from that what you need, it's a, it's a fun, it's a simple lesson, but I swear to God, from the 500th alpha male I've seen on Twitter and on YouTube and on live streams and everywhere, they fall for this one more than anything. And I guarantee you, you try this out yourself. When you're in a social situation with some other dudes who are bragging about how awesome they are, try just um, ignoring whatever fantasy they want you to believe and see how many of them instantly start to defend excuse, explain, or rationalize why they are as awesome as they say. And then you're going to start to understand what it means when a girl says, I want a man who just gets it. Because you're watching a guy in real time who doesn't get it. So enjoy yourselves. Catch you guys in the next episode. Have fun. Cheers.